What's up guys? Welcome to Visualization. Nestor Adrian Sen here again. Today guys, today I'm going to solve one of the questions that I asked on my social media platforms. Does calendar auto scan calculated date columns as well? Do you want to learn the answer? Stay tuned. All right, before I solve the question, let's take a look at the polls that I have on social media. Okay, so this is my YouTube channel and you guys might be familiar with my channel, but this is the question that I posted a few days ago, seven days ago. I'm giving you guys more background here. What I'm saying here is if you deal with date calculations in DAX, you should create a calendar table. You can create a calendar table by using two different functions, right? You can use calendar or you can use calendar auto. With calendar, you need to provide the lower and upper date limits. But the other function, the calendar auto, automatically selects the boundaries of the set of dates in your model. So in other words, less work, right? With calendar auto. So the question that I had here was, does calendar auto scan calculated date columns as well? Three different options here yes no or i don't know as you guys can see 73 percent said yes 10 percent said no and 18 percent said i don't know so now let's take a look at the other platform here linkedin okay so this is my company right this excelization and here i also posted the same question right the same background same question here that's calendar auto scan calculated date columns as well. 32 votes here, 59% said yes, 22% said no, and 19% said I don't know. Like I said, I wanted to give you guys more background about this question, and also I wanted to provide you with the answers that we saw in these polls, right? But now let's go to Power BI Desktop and let's solve the question. Okay, so here we are in Power BI Desktop. Before we get started, real quick, I have two tables here. I have a table called birthday, and also I have a table called financials. The financials table comes directly from Microsoft, so you can have that there. And then the birthday table, I created this table, but don't worry, I'm gonna share with you the link to this file, so you can use this as a reference as well. So real quick, let's explore the data. What we have here, let's go to data here and then birthday. So we have the birthday column here. We have the name, we have purchase date and also we have amount spent. So if you guys are curious here, so we have the lowest date is 1985, August 22nd, 1985. And then the highest date here is in 2021. So the year is 2021. Please keep that in mind. Now let's explore the other table real quick, the financials table. So the financials table, if we take a look at year, the column year, so we only have two different years, 2013 and 2014. If we take a look at the other column here, date, so it's gonna be basically the same thing, 2013 and 2014. So now you have an idea about the dates that we have in the model. The next step here is to create a calendar table. And we're gonna use this powerful function called calendar auto. So we're gonna go to modeling here real quick. New table. And now let's rename this table. We're gonna call this dates, okay? And we're gonna use the calendar auto function, All right? So let's hit enter and then see what happens. All right, it's loading. Perfect. You now can see here a new table with just one column called date. If we hit date here, there you go. This is the table that we just created, right? This is the calendar table. And we didn't have to select any upper or lower limits. The machine, Power BI, automatically selected the date for you. So let's change the format here, just a short format. So now that you have those dates, 
So now let's go back to report and let's create a couple of measures here, okay? So let's hit enter the data. So basically we're creating a new table here to store the measures, okay? I'm gonna call this DAX measures. So we have this new table called DAX measures with just one column. We're gonna delete that column, but first let's create these measures, okay? New measure. And we're gonna call this minimum date, okay? So we're gonna use the minimum function here, okay? And we're gonna select the date column from the calendar table. Let's hit enter. There you go, perfect. So same thing here. So we're gonna create a new measure, okay? And we're gonna name this new measure as max date. Okay, so we're gonna use the maximum function here as well. There you go. And we are selecting the date column from the calendar table. Let's hit enter and let's see what happens. So now that we created these two measures, we can easily delete this column right here. We don't care about that, okay? Why did we create these two measures? So we're gonna insert here two cards, okay? Let's insert this card real quick, and then let's reference the minimum date here. Because we wanna learn, right, what is going on here. So we now see that 1985, January 1st is the first date of the calendar table. So we're gonna do the same thing here, Control C, Control V. We are basically duplicating this measure and then we're gonna change here the measure, right? So we duplicated the card and we changed the measure from minimum to maximum date. So what is going on here then? So we are seeing here that the minimum date is 1985 and then the maximum date is 2021. And of course, this has to be December 31st because that's what Calendar Auto does. So remember here, every time we use Calendar Auto, the minimum date is gonna be January 1st and then the minimum year. And also for the maximum date, for the upper limit, it's gonna give you always December 31st. And of course, it's gonna be the maximum year that we have in the model. So guys, that's what's happening. But then now there is another question, right? Do we really need those dates since 1985? Maybe we don't need it. We are using just memory there. So we can also limit the boundaries of the calendar arrow function. So we can do that as well and of course, this is a different topic. We can, we can go over this topic in a different tutorial. But now, let's do something really interesting here. So let's add a calculated date column to the birthday table. Let's do that real quick. Right click here, new column. Why are we doing this? We wanna understand if the calendar auto function scans calculated date columns as well. So let's do that. So we're gonna name this new column as recording date. So in here, we're gonna use the date function and for year, 2022, and then for month, it's February, and then for day, we're gonna use today's date, which is 18. So let's see what happens. Hit enter, because the calendar auto function automatically scans the model, the dates in the model, so the results is telling us that the calendar auto function doesn't scan calculated columns. Why? If we take a look at this real quick, check this out, my friend. So let's go to this table here. So we just added this new column, right? This is a calculated column. So we're gonna change the format here just to short format. There you go, see? This is the date that we have, right? So as you guys can see, now the maximum date should be February 18, 2022. And then if we go back to report here, 
So we should be seeing here 2022 because the hypothesis was, okay, so we create a new column, calculated date column. This function should also scan calculated date columns. But as you guys can see here, that's not the case. So now guys, we can easily answer the question, right? Does calendar auto scan calculated date columns as well? The answer is obvious, it doesn't. This function only scans native date data in the model. All right, guys, that was it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Thank you, guys, and see you in my next tutorial.